And I'm going to show you, I think what I call maybe the, the kind of the three hats that I kind of wear. One is about uh, starting about how things are made. One is the hat of who is me. Second, kind of working for a, a large multinational, how to make a product, and also how uh, kind of to help them visualize a strategy, also thinking about the future. And last one, really how to make the future, which is about the people involved when I'm teaching. I never thought I was going to be in Indaba, when it's that small. And for me, it's always very important to think where I come from. I always have said that I am first Colombian, and then I am a designer. And I cannot expect that people find maybe Colombian motifs in my designs, but maybe more in some way my values, my memories, maybe the colors, the fruits. But most important, I will say, music. I think music is something that really kind of change things and makes things happen. And I think you here also have a great history, a great culture of that. And for me, that's always been very important. I'm from Bucaramanga. And this is just a little snip of some of the, the music that I have and the flavors where I come from. As you can see, I would say fruit is the thing that I miss most, maybe living in, in Western, Northern Europe. I was used to, when I arrived to, let's say, to Holland, you only have orange juice or apple juice. I used to have every day kind of a different type of fruit. But going back to playing seriously, I really believe that today, as I think Mark Mer showed us very clearly, people are really looking always for easy recipes, kind of how they can put you into a box. And I always believe that any recipe doesn't necessarily guarantee a, a great meal. I think you still need a, a great cook, because I think great cooks are the ones that can put things together and really are an essential part of that making, which is something that I've always been very keen and, and in favor of how we can instill or how can we stimulate this making. So first I'm going to show you what I call the, the making of a viewing experience. It's a very it's a product, it's a television. Then second, as I mean, the making of simplicity, which is kind of the brand of the company. And the third is the making people make. This was a television that was launched a year ago. It kind of was a big thing for the World Cup at that time. And at that time, we had introduced a piece of what we call a technology, something called Ambilight, which is trying to, a light that would kind of glow around the display, just to kind of make you the whole idea more immersive. And for designers, when we design a television, is really what we call when the television is off. Some, our consumers call it the, the black hole. How can we make it more attractive? Or how can we make it kind of more active instead of being so passive, this kind of black screen that you see all over the place? And it's not just us, it's the competition. I would say this one probably is the most important, is how we manage the relationship between really what we call the development, the factory, the design, the business, and also the whole idea of time and money, and of course, the quality. And I think these are the three most challenging things, especially in the type of environment where I come from. If you, you know, the previous ambilight that we had in television, you know, if you had a, 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 green, a green wall, you could not see it. Then me as a designer kind of question the development. How, you know, what happened when you have a green wall? You cannot see the light, what can we do about it? What happened if you put like a canvas to highlight it, kind of almost the light painting the canvas? Then we had the, the, the business person, but we had to make a market test. We spent incredible amounts of money. We had to go to Chicago, to Hamburg, to Paris. Also, it's forgetting Shanghai. And people say things, and they mention when you make it like this, is it thick, is it not so thick, is it bigger, too big? But anyway, we, we like to listen to our people. And then we present it to our management, and they say, oh, it's interesting, but why don't you make it smaller? Then we have a discussion between the designer and the management, and a lot of the issues come up. Why do you paint it black? Why do you make it lighter? Can you make it smaller? So the whole thing that goes, and the time and the money is being consumed. 
Then finally, we can agree. So the three, they develop and they say, yeah, we can make it like that. The designer, okay, I'm happy with this. And the, the product management say, okay, I think it looks good. Let's go for it. So it's really important in how we can manage what I call that relationships. And third comes, I think, really the designer's job. What is our role in this whole process? I really believe that we always have kind of our heads in the clouds, but really our feet has to be in the ground. We really have to understand the reality, what is about making a product. There's constraints, there's materials, where things come from. And also understanding you know, who is going to distribute and the marketing. They have a lot of also issues, but it's very important that we can see how we can keep that balance. And again, we really must share this dream. And when we share, I say share the dream, and we must share between the development, the marketing people, because all are in the same kind of boat together. Unless we have this kind of a sharing vision, it's very difficult to succeed. Because we must stay with the vision. And as designers, we must really keep that vision. I will say that's probably one of the most important things as a designer, how we can keep the vision. How can we maintain the integrity of what we wanted to do from the beginning to keep it across the whole process. And at the end, of course, it has to be desirable. Even it's such a complex thing and so many factors playing, and then we, has to make it, we have to make it desirable. The whole idea of the ambient light is that the content is linked to the light. So if you have, in this case, like a swimming pool, so the light will become blue. Some people find it attractive. Some people say, oh, I don't know. The option is you can always turn it off. As we have known in our research, people that have, we have given the, the, the product for a month with a feature and they come back and, and say, can you, will you turn it off? They say, no, I think they would like to have it on. So for some people, they find it very attractive because it helps them kind of, what we call kind of create more immersive experience, it's kind of similar to what you see in the cinema. So this is the final product. That's what you feel when People are watching it at home. But at the end, I think so really two main things is how can we make something desirable? How can we, let's say, get rid of this kind of a, when the television is off, which is the challenge. And, th and, and second is really, at the end, it's about, it's by people for people. And how we do that? Because we listen to them and we listen to what the experiences are and see how we can translate them into something that I say is attractive and appealing. Now I'm gonna to move to something a little more, I would say, strategic and more think a little about the future. What we call the, the project called the Making of Simplicity. In 2006, we did an event in London. I'm gonna let you show you for now a, a little video clip, and later on I will explain to you why, why is it. This week, we're going to keep things nice and simple. We're going to be looking at a few devices which are just around the corner, and there's not a keyboard or a mouse in sight. This week, we take a look at tech for your well-being and health, entertainment and moods. We've come to London's largest exhibition centre for a sneak preview of one company's vision of the future. For the last two years, Philips have pounded the mantra, sense and simplicity. See. Apple isn't the only one that just wants technology to be intuitive and look cool. This is a surround sound speaker, which actually looks more like a decoration vase than a box. This central light changes colour throughout the day. It projects patterns onto the ceiling of either a night sky or pool of water, so you can set the mood that you want. And if you don't fancy any of those colours, how about the colour of your shirt or even the colour of this cup? Now this thing is called a chameleon lamp. A sensor detects any colour that you put in front of it and LEDs inside the lampshade recreate that colour. Hmm, bubblegum pink. Ever fancy drawing on your walls? I know I have. Well, first of all, you have to stir up the right colour. This paint bucket will project light onto a wall from a close distance, mapping the pen movement sent to it via Bluetooth. The other pen, well, it's just magic. We're not sure how all that happens. Getting children away from computers and engaging in more physical activity was the driving force behind these versatiles, which can be used to play a variety of games. You can place them in any combination and choose to play Simple Simon or Hopscotch, if you can remember which tile controls all the other ones. 
Now everything here is between two to five years away from the shops, but researchers want some feedback now on technology with a human touch. We're getting more concerned about healthy living, and this device takes your temperature from your ear and sends it to the diagnostic computer. No, not a terminal. It's the mirror in your bathroom, of course. In this scenario, Joanna's getting advice on her fertility cycle, but other readings could also be taken, which we can then pour over while we prepare for work. These scales take readings from the soles of your feet to tell you, among other things, whether you're drinking enough water. The finish on this example, with the LEDs just below the surface of the wood, gives a really natural feel to an object that can look clunky. But accurate readings will be everything. We won't stand for dodgy diagnoses. Time for that glass of water, and a nice touch putting a UV light filter in the tap. Trouble is, scientists already know that bacteria build up inside the tap head, so you will need to replace it every three months. Some very stylish and simple interfaces there, but will any of them surpass the traditional keyboard and mouse? I think we were not the first one that have, you know, starting to claim the word simplicity. I think other companies have in the past tried. But for us, it's really important to understand what is this or how can this be unique for Phyllis? What does it mean for our company? How can we translate it in, with our own values, with our own yeah, expectations, our own desires and wishes? What, how can we make it unique for us? The brief that uh, Global Brand Management gave us is, can you please help us to communicate the Phyllis Brand Promise was introduced two years before Sense of Simplicity. Can you help us to articulate in what we call simplicity demonstrators, or something that could maybe demonstrate this brand promise of simplicity? What was the target audience? So we had the media from the healthcare, uh, lifestyle, electronics, uh, we have existing the partners, uh, our customers, our partners that we do business with, opinion formers in different category, our colleagues, uh, marketing people, stakeholder groups, uh, education, uh, universities, government agencies, and most important again, the Phyllis organization, our board of management, our, the heads of our product division, and finally, of course, our employees. The, object of the project, as you have seen, was, had kind of three main ingredients. One was the stage experiences, kind of every category. Uh, the ones that you saw there, for example, the lady and the man was called the, the island of listen to your body. So the idea that this stage experience was that when the business will see this thing, will maybe help us to create the product roadmaps. When I talk about roadmap, is maybe help the business understand where maybe if some of these things could come, between three or five years into the business or even longer. The second ingredient, this was a travel exhibition. For example, this exhibition was, done, was gone, first was in London introduced, then went to Hong Kong, and in two months is going to Brazil. Why? Because it will help us as a, kind of, as a communication piece and also will create a lot of media assets. And finally, probably the most important one for the companies that it creates a lot of communication, but really it, to create triggers for cultural change, we believe that if we cannot change the culture inside the company, it's very difficult to maybe to change the behavior or the people that we the work here in, or, or the business, how they business. So that's a really important piece of deliverable. We made very quickly, makes it looks like company shop, but this has already happened three years. The first one was the, we did it in Paris, and was really kind of trying to show the businesses are separate units. We had consumer electronics, domestic appliances, and how simplicity could be part of their products and lighting. So that was the first one we did. Then the 2006, we said, no, look, we have to move into something more to stimulate what we call cross-divisional, cross-product divisions, and also looking about how we can talk about business to consumer. So then we created a team of healthy lifestyle. And the last one that we just happened last September, October in London, was the whole idea of caring for people, again, was more from business to business, again, cross the vision of trying to present that we are not a company that has just lighting, health, and lifestyle, but it's a company that can have products that can cross that and maybe kind of make them more richer and more stimulate. This is maybe, again, another chart that maybe is quite overloaded, but I think the most important thing I want to say here, 
we see this as what we call as a communication value. It's not trying to tell the company or the people that these are the products that you have to make in the next five years. We use a little example of the car industry. They use the model of the concept car. And concept cars are just kind of proposition where companies present the new technologies, maybe the new language of design, trying to embody in one object, in one product, that maybe you will never see it being driven in the street because you hardly ever see those concept cars being driven. So for us, we kind of took the same model and say, look, this simplicity event is kind of a, a concept car, and it's important for us because it will stimulate our business also, in some way challenge the thinking of the traditional thinking of some of our business. We also tried to create what we call a framework. How we apply the simplicity like design. I think here again, what is most important is really we wanted to try to reverse our product creation process. Normally, our traditional designers are working today very much in what we call the how. It's kind of, can you please make it look nice? We believe that with the whole manufacturing going to Asia, the role of designer in that stage is becoming almost, in some cases, obsolete. It's not as important as it used to be. We really want to become part of what we call the what. Why? Because the what, because we're interested in what we call what makes sense for people. How can we create what we call meaningful and relevant solutions for people? So we want to be, as designers, here in the what at the beginning, almost kind of helping the business create the strategy, almost the discovery, what is going to happen, and then eventually move until what we call the how is the end user experience, and really looking in what we traditionally call the look and feel, but really add what we call now the behavior. So we're trying to kind of the two things come together to create what we call the new codes of simplicity. We do a process that quite traditional, maybe a lot of you probably use as a product creation process. Now we look at the four sides. In that case, at that time the company had health, lifestyle, and technology. As the focus, we have the Phyllis roadmaps. Roadmaps, each company or each division has a different specific roadmap how they want to be. We have the framework, we have some tools and we have methodologies. And we have some cultural signals from the market from our trends. And we do a process, you know, we do kind of a workshop, we do a lot of teams, sketching, brainstorming. We collect them again, we select them, and then maybe four teams came out of. We visualize them, create scenarios, and at the end we came with some kind of islands. In the case, for example, the one, the video I showed, we had like five islands, one was called listen to your body, care for yourself, relax your mind, and I think I forgot the other two. And last one, which is probably one of the most important things, if we create these note codes, how can we do this in the company? How can we apply them? What is, what, what's happening there? I think today, I think how is this influence people? I think the brand, we, in the last two years, we have we got six points in the ranking by Interbrand. We've seen very little of the products yet. As you know, products that, for example, were introduced in 2006 were already conceived in 2004, 2003. Sometimes we take us 24 months or 50 months, depends on the type of product. So we're starting just to see very little products, but they're coming. And probably, the, I would say the most important is what has happened is really on the organization. For example, for, uh, out of this event, uh, we have a new category, a new product division called uh, Consumer Lifestyle. Uh, Last year, for example, in November, we celebrated what we call the Simplicity Day, uh, where 128,000 employees in one day, worldwide kind of dealer, uh, were presented with the whole topic of simplicity. But I think the most important thing is that this doesn't stop there. This is just, as our person called, kind of the beginning of a journey. And also for us, it's very important. Simplicity is how we do business. For example, in certain businesses, we are not allowed to make a presentation that has more than 10 slides. So really. It's also being applied to how we do business every day, how we treat our people every day, how we treat our suppliers, how we treat our employees. So all those things are also part of this simplicity. It's not just the communication of the brand. So I think we have to start maybe for internally first before we can maybe start deploying it outside. And really at the end, making simplicity is about, it's really kind of being authentic. It's really kind of hiding. It's kind of showing, making visible the invisible. And maybe more important is, it is really, I think what we always have known for many years, as, or we always have considered as good design. I think that's what I, for me, what is most important. Now the third point is about making people make. And it's here really my, how I can all in some way continue playing. And it's here when I have my hat as a, 
head of the department of the Design Academy in Hoven in the Department of uh, Mine and Activity. I don't know if you know that the Design Academy is kind of really called the house on concept. Maybe it's because we are kind of always, because our organization, how school is organized, maybe it's not traditionally in the kind of the product, uh, graphic, or visual communication. But we have different, we have eight departments, like, and they really always focus on men, and we're like man and identity, man and leisure, man and communication, man and well-being, man and activity, man and public space. So it's always about people, but also thinking about in more, in more specific to make it a little more richer. And one of the things that I try to make in my department is how the idea of making, because I really believe you can make something, maybe you have the chance to put something in the world and also create a position in the world. In this case, for example, if I show you, you see the, on the right the word Martin Bass. Also, I think Martin challenged the idea that design is not always a starting from a, a piece of white paper. He found an object, he found some furniture, and he burned it and created the smoke collection. In some way, he cannot create a new aesthetic. So it's very interesting that he, by taking a completely different approach as we traditionally do, he created something, and now today is a very well-known and recognizable designer. Maybe a younger designer, uh, Rebecca, which is not very well known yet, but I think she did a, quite, for me, a very beautiful piece. It was a, a project called 360. The whole idea was a project that has to do this kind of duality. So in this case, this lamp during the day collects the energy. It's also very sustainable, something that, that we're, we need more in our world. And in the night, you turn around and you become a lamp. It's made a product and it's just a start to become. But these are the kinds of things, two very different approaches two very different solutions at something that is the reality around us. Now I'm going to show you two more projects. I think so it's about the making, but not maybe just the product, but really, as I mentioned, about an experience. And this is something that I, a product was made by a project, uh, just a recent graduate called uh, Yelte Van Heist. And I'll let you, it's called Take a Seat. How many young students looking at, again, not just the pro, but maybe the Holy Spirit, and what happens, and also not just for him, but also extending to other parts of the, the organization. How can we, maybe the management can use it and kind of give it that more kind of lively, so almost where the object becomes uh, so more animated and I would say attractive. Another project that I will say was one of my favorites that I have done for my 10 years of teaching. And it's called a silk story, which is kind of the whole topic of cradle to cradle. And it's, I think what is here is that we're, not try, we're trying to teach people or 
for our students to maybe more to learn, because I, I'm quite a great believer that maybe you can already teach design, maybe design has to be learned. That uh, uh, the, sometimes, you know, as, a direct, as a designer, as a creative director, you can direct people, companies, but I think this student kind of challenged that, maybe why not move to, to insects? Let's see if I can add direct, create, direct them to do make something. I think I'm gonna let Elsbeth Joy, I'm gonna let you, that you can go through the story what she made, because I think it's quite beautiful. And remember she told me that uh, she was always trying to go back to her room because she had the 200 worms that she had to feed every night <laughs> to be able to make the project. And I think uh, sometimes maybe when we come from countries like here or where I come from, that we are more in development, Sometimes we are looking always maybe too far away, or, or maybe the bright lights blind us that we cannot see the stars. And maybe sometimes the answers are next to us, but we are so busy looking there that we, we cannot miss them. And I think we have to kind of maybe sometimes, when we look for us, we have a lot of rich history, or you have a rich history, and you have many different things. Sometimes it's maybe it's good to first understand them and see how maybe we can translate them to something that can become meaningful and especially very attractive for the world. Finally, I really believe it's, as also I have mentioned, about really content and connecting. How, through the projects that I show, how really you can contact with people, how you can make the development people cannot make them fascinated, you cannot challenge them, but it's really by talking, it's really one to one. And how can you make that connection? Because Finally, I really believe it's, as also I have mentioned, about really content and connecting. How through the projects that I show, how really you can contact with people, how you can make the development people cannot make them fascinated, you cannot challenge them, but it's really by talking, it's really one-to-one. -one. And how can you make that connection? Because I think it's one of the, the, the role of the designer is kind of to make new connections so that eventually maybe will give a new meaning to things. And really having a clear position, a clear thinking, really the one idea you have seen before in our two previous speakers, the really the power of that idea I really believe we only need one. And I think it's really, almost today we're in the world that almost the idea is to reduce. How can you almost take away until you have that idea, you have that really that essence that really matters. And the world is about really collaborating, sharing, working as a team. I think the whole world of the designer is a kind of the very romantic guy that will walk into the room with the scarf and say, oh, here is my design. I think that's in some ways over. Our world is too complex and kind of we need to kind of work in interdisciplinary. And at the same time, it's also kind of very rich and I think very stimulating to have different people from different backgrounds and disciplines working together. Finally, fourth, I think it says about gaining trust. I would say trust equals risk. Almost, you could, I, for me, it's almost like a mathematical formula. I believe that if the business or whoever you're working for trusts you, the more they trust you, the more they allow you to take risk. If they don't trust you, every single decision you make, if you make a, a gray, you no, know, I want to make something gray, they ask you, what, what do you mean, what kind of gray? So it's really about trying to understand that, and, you know, and trust you don't get because someone writes in a piece of paper. You, you gain the trust through your life, through the work, through your experience, through your behavior. And it's really like, always like, like you Ponte used to say, you know, how can we make let's, make, let's do something that is fun every day. Let's enjoy what we're doing. Because I really, I believe playing serial is about celebrating making as a fundamental human thing. Because I think that's where we are here. That's how we use our hands, our brains, but really to make things. And especially here, a country where uh, we are not in the, maybe in the area of the knowledge, but still our hands are our kind of most valuable thing. I think we must celebrate that. Thank you. <laughs>